try to name them as soon as it's the most popular we have. Such big jobs to re repair roads and utilities. Lord, we once again lift up our, our health care workers. Lord, um, we pray that you encourage and lift them up, give them strength. We pray for all who will need medical care this week and for their caregivers. Lord, we pray for ourselves. Lord, sometimes we, we let our own prejudices and judgments stand in our, our way of, of being caring and, and really following Jesus. Lord, we, we just humbly ask that we can be like little children, to see you and, and know that you are real and to walk more closely with Jesus every day. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. So 
feels like, as we work our way through it, that we, we, we kind of get a, a look at exactly what, what are the Pharisees trying to do? Like they, they wanted to run, run weight rings around Jesus. They wanted to confuse him. But most of all, they, they wanted to catch him. They, they, they wanted to make him look foolish. You know, I, I, it's like, you know, when, when you ask a Republican candidate about Project 2025, or, or Tim Walls about his statement about carrying an automatic weapon in, in, in combat, or any, any other controversial issues. They wanted him to take a stand on an issue that was certain, certain to cause division, or anger, or hurt. They were constantly trying to get him in trouble with the people. Yet Jesus managed to find ways to avoid that trouble. He didn't avoid the issue as it is presented, but managed to turn it around in such a way that it was hard to take offense or to keep the argument boiling. So he would diffuse the, these hot button issues. This is my main point, but I just want to say a few brief words about marriage. A ton of literature is out there about marriage and divorce, and, and I'm not going to provide a whole history, biography uh, on the subject. Anytime we gather for worship, there are those among us who have gone through the trauma of divorce. From a legal perspective, the people have married legally, they're divorced legally, and it's probably the fair, fair to say they've experienced a whole lot of emotional and difficult trauma. And you know what? We don't need to pile it on here. Absolutely not. Instead, this is an opportunity just to emphasize how important the scripture treats marriage. Marriage is a gift from God, a sacred bond that scripture often uses to describe the relationship between Jesus and, and the church. Therefore, if we're married now, whether or not it's a first marriage, we're called to value that marriage and to do everything within our power to pre preserve its power. That's it. Well, you know, I've said it several times already, it's World Communion Sunday, a, a date when we remember that when we partake of the Holy Sacrament of Communion, we don't just do it here. We don't do it alone. This meal it, it is not for us to share alone. The ritual is performed in more languages than we can count. The bread takes many forms and flavors. The celebrants come in all colors and answer to a variety of titles. It's a world communion observation in a diverse and divided world. And it's a world that needs, that has needs as real as bread and hungers as deep as the ocean. So here's, here's the question. Is communion primarily a spiritual event or a physical one? Well, really it's a bit of both. But don't we really lean into the spiritual side? Sure, there, there's, there's bread and juice, but you know, without grace, without remembrance, isn't that what really makes communion? 
Our task on communion days is to experience the presence of Christ. That's it. And, and when it's done well, we can feel it in powerful ways. It's our task to transport ourselves into a spiritual plane and commune with the one who has set the table. Or to move beyond the mundane and enjoy the sublime. That's what it's about. Well, I'm not so sure. Jesus seemed intent on making things, making faith real. He was grounded in the reality of the world in which we live. You can just think about all these images of the kingdom and the metaphors and parables that were used were of earth. Seeds and pearls, light and darkness, Sheep, the coins, the stuff, the stuff of everyday life. I, I think he sat at the table, took hold of the reality of bread, and said, this is my body. This is me. I'm here. I'm just as real as this bread. And every time you pick up a loaf of bread, you're touching me, holding me, claiming me. I'm here, right here, in this world with you. He wanted people grounded, not, not floating around on some heavenly cloud somewhere. He, when his disciples tried to turn the talk to the reality of the kingdom, you know, they started asking about seating arrangements and place cards on the table. You know, Jesus got exasperated with them. This cup, he said, this cup is my whole life. I am as present as the clay that made this cup. I am as live as the bouquet of this wine. The fruit of the vine, I am the vine, he said. He, he was trying to get his followers to live in the world, to pay attention to what was going on right around them. You know, that's really a trait of his, issuing an invitation to pay attention. He was always pointing to the most unlikely things and, and, and the most unlikely people. And, 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 you know, when we get used to ignoring them, he said, see them. To really see them. Now, now let's get to that part of scripture. That in piece that I really wanted to focus on today. As Mark records, the people were bringing little children in order that, that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw that, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And then he took them up in his arms and laid his hands on them and blessed them. This is the Jesus that we know and love best of all. That's what I believe. But, but we have to realize this was not normal behavior. This was a big, radical departure. No one with any authority or power 
or standing in society in that period of history would ever have time for children. It, it, it wasn't done. And yet, here is Jesus not only allowing children to be present, but taking them up in his arms and blessing them. Oh, they said, gosh, this is awful weird. It, it's embarrassing. I'm not sure if some like the disciples themselves were, were scandalized by this behavior. Well, you know what? Jesus didn't care. What he cared about was blessing. He cared about touching and putting the children on his lap. They were real people, worthy of his attention and of his presence. He cared about welcoming and including. He cared about making sure that everyone understood the value of those of whom he said, let them come. Mark says Jesus was angry, indignant. Our translation says, you know, this is, this is a harsh word in Greek. Jesus was trying to be concrete. You're in the way. He said to the disciples who were turned into bouncers trying to keep the kids away, you're in the way, not just of these kids, but of the kingdom. Boy, really, this is one of those get behind me sick moments. One of many, you know. It, 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 it happened a lot. The disciples were missing something fundamental. So Jesus was trying to help his, his hearers see something of the glory and the wonder of God's kingdom. So, so he grabbed the nearest visual aid that he could find. Come and see, he could have said. See through these eyes the wonder of God's creation. Come and see the needs and the opportunities to serve. And to gather them up so that we could see that the best way to rid ourselves of doubts and fears and suspicions and animosity was by getting outside of yourself and, and, and blessing, blessing a child. To talk to them, to listen to them, to experience the world through their eyes. Well, you know, maybe it's because I grew up in the 60s. I've always been you know, aware of this call to be childlike but not childish. If we're going to discern, grow, be serious about this walk with Jesus. But then, then he wanted to make sure that we didn't miss the point here. He wanted to make sure the disciples didn't miss it and that through them, we don't miss it either. To such as these belongs the kingdom of God. Well, actually, it, it, it doesn't say belongs. The verb here isn't belongs. It is is. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God is. Yeah. They've got it, he says. They are it. You want to embrace the kingdom? Embrace the child. Let them come, he says. That means that how we treat children and what we allow done to children or not done to children is what we do to the kingdom of God. Whoa. I mean, wow. 
don't you think? And then, in case it's still unclear, Jesus cries at home, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And then you wonder, what does that mean exactly? That's a question that's driven biblical scholars crazy for two millennia. On the one hand, are we supposed to receive the kingdom of God as a child would receive the kingdom? Or as a child would receive anything? Or are we supposed to receive the kingdom in the way that we receive a child? Or as we receive a child? In other words, is our ability to receive the kingdom of God dependent, dependent on how we treat the children who are in our midst? How we treat children or mistreat them as individuals, as a society. When children suffer at the hands of adults, governments, religious leaders, or parents, are we in danger of losing our grip on the kingdom of God? <coughs> oh, that's pretty heavy. Maybe the heaviness of that line of thinking is why most commentators take the other track.
this. This is the real stuff. This is the body of Jesus. This cup is all of Jesus. So we have real substance. And Jesus is really with us. But we also, we remember Jesus sat this table. Jesus opened the table to everybody. Everybody who's ready to, to receive. <laughs> like little children. So the invitation comes in and we remember. Right? We remember the story. We remember God's love and grace that infuse the story. Because when we come to the Lord's table, we cannot forget how Jesus and his disciples were in Jerusalem. They gathered in the upper room to celebrate Passover, to remember how God had heard the cries of the children of Israel and delivered them from slavery and bondage and brought them to the promised land. And then Jesus took the bread, visual aid. <laughs> Jesus broke the bread, gave, thank, gave thanks to God, broke the bread and said, hey, this is my body. Eat this in remembrance of me. Later, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to God, and then he said, this is a cup of new covenant. My blood shed for the forgiveness of sin. Drink this in remembrance of me. We break the bread, we, we share the cup, we remember the story, we remember how much God loves humanity. Didn't even hold back. Didn't even hold back the only son. And through Jesus' life and death and resurrection, we experience Christ present here with us. Through the grace of God. Not because we say the right words. Not because we're initiated into the right organization. Not that we're the church that gets it. But because we're part of the big body of the body of Christ throughout the world. And because God's grace. So we humbly, we humbly come and receive what God gives us. Let's receive with both hands, like a little child. Let us grasp the kingdom of God. Let us Try to see the world like, like Jesus is, is trying to get us to see the kingdom breaking in. As we prepare to take the bread and share the cup, let us, with the boldness of little children, pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thank you.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Receive them. receive the kingdom <clears throat> as little children. Gather in our benediction for 